Hello and a very warm welcome to Retro Collecting with Retro Ed and Friends. In this mini series we're going to cover the do's and don'ts of retro collecting. It should be a useful guide for new and veteran collectors alike. I'm going to be joined by an army of friends, an army of tubers who are going to give their advice, their recommendations on how to collect retro. Throughout the series I'll be putting everyone's channel details within the description so make sure you check them out. There's some absolutely fantastic channels in there with some awesome content. This first episode focuses on some of the popular places to get your retro goodness from and there are just so many sources. However, before we dive in, let's have a listen to the insights of the fantastic Ollie, aka 8-Bit Boy. Hey guys, I'm 8-Bit Boy and I'm here to give you a few tips on uh, retro collecting um, and perhaps give you a little bit of, uh, well, I don't know about wisdom, um, but perhaps some just ideas based on what I've found and maybe some mistakes I've made as well. And um, so the best piece of advice, uh, well, <laughs> the best piece of advice I could give you is don't. <laughs> it will take over your life and you'll have no money. Um, but if you do decide to ignore that first piece of advice, um, then the best piece of advice I could give you is probably start with the end in mind. And what I mean by that is try to have an idea of where you want to get to and give yourself a goal or several goals. Um, I think when I started, um, I, I'd become a collector without even knowing it really. And it quite quickly became quite addictive, um, just picking up anything and everything that caught my eye, you know, proper like kid in a sweet shop. And it was only when I really decided that you know, I wanted to pick something up or, or go towards a particular goal that everything started to become that much clearer for me and more focused. And I got a lot more enjoyment out of that when I focused for me um, on uh, collecting for a uh, for, for Sega Master System. That's kind of my um, my go to, although I do you know pick a lot of other bits up along the way that I that I play um for ps5 switch all sorts and the best way um that i then once i've made my mind up on the direction that i wanted to go into i started using um one uh, a spreadsheet to track everything um i know there are apps out there as well so i would give them a go um fa i mean other than that really it's just about really doing your research and um, there's some fantastic forums out there um, especially for the Master System and Sega 8-bit um, games that are out there, like SMS Tributes and SMS Power. And they're the ones I use to get into, and I met some great people. Anyway, guys, I hope that's been super useful just to start off with. Um, that, would be, um, that would be what I would do if I could start again. Good luck! Now let's talk about what arguably is the most popular place to grab some retro. eBay. Personally, I use eBay a fair bit, and I've been involved in it since it was rolled out in the UK. Um, in my early 20s, I used to sell alloy wheels on behalf of a local car salesroom, and quickly realised how powerful it could be. The key advantage is that it will have most items you may be looking for. Clearly the largest online auction worldwide, it allows you to tap into so many places. And if you live somewhere where retro isn't available locally, or if you're after something specific, then this is the way to go. Like all things, however, there are some considerations. Prices can be high, sometimes due to scrupulous sellers, but also as they'll need to build in a fraction to cater for the eBay costs. It's not perfect, but some guardrails are in place to reduce fraud, but you still need to be careful and eyeball what you're looking at. Is the seller hiding something by only showing part of the item in the photos? Are the postage fees extortionate? Have they good or not so good feedback? There's a few things to consider. And now we've got the king of cool talking about what he enjoys most from eBay. And don't forget to check out his t-shirt. And that's where eBay and Mercari come in. These are things that I use when I know what I'm looking for. I want to target a specific item. More likely than not, eBay and Mercari are going to have what I'm looking for. You can do filtering like... Uh, first of all, there's buy it now stuff, there's auctions, but you can do filtering. I like to filter with auctions that are ending soonest. <clears throat> I like to obviously sort by lowest price. That's something, you know, that's where the power of eBay and Mercari come into play. 
Next up, we're gonna talk a bit about auctions and as well as the obvious auction houses, a few companies have popped up, such as the salesroom.com, that have made auctions very, very accessible. With the online approach, you can view the auction live, bid along with others who may be physically at the auction, and also other bidders online. In my opinion, this approach hasn't fully taken off. This often means there's fewer bidders, which can sometimes mean lower prices. Often retro toys or games can be sprinkled with other vintage items, so a lot of the bidders aren't necessarily interested in what you're after. Again, this can mean winning items for less. Be careful though, as fees are overlaid to the winning bid, which can be up to or over a quarter of the bid. These are often referred to as the buyer's premium. Also, postage can vary considerably. Some auction houses may insist the buyer sorts it, others will use a specific courier, and others may just be collect only, so do your research. Most of my rarer or more valuable items have been bought this way. And a quick cheeky tip, always be on the lookout for a midweek auction. Quite often it means they're less well attended, which means you've got a higher chance of bagging an item for a fantastic price. Now who doesn't get excited by putting down the phone, the laptop, the tablet or whatever, heading out the front door, going into the big wide world and visiting a local toy shop or local game shop, charity shop, etc. Some good old bricks and mortar. And you kind of you step into these places, you never know what you're going to find. And even if you've got a place on your doorstep, you might go in you know, week on week or month on month and the stock invariably will change and there'll always be something there that you haven't seen before. So to talk about this, we've got some fantastic tubers and to kick off proceedings, we've got Dale from the fantastic Daily Retro channel. If you have a retro game shop within an hour's drive, you have absolutely no excuse. Yes, there are lots of CEXs around um, and yes, they have a lot of stock, but when you go into a retro game shop, they will do their utmost to give you a great deal. Um, they will obviously also go out of their way to find you deals. So if you come on good terms with the owners of the shops, they will then look out for you for items that you may be on the lookout for. So we'll talk about the retro store. Um, obviously retro store, there's nothing quite like going into a physical location, looking to see what they have on the shelf. Um, in the case, you get to establish a relationship with the shopkeeper. There's really something to be said for that. Who knows? Maybe down the road, you get to know them, first name basis type of thing. You might get a discount. You might not, and that's okay, but there's nothing quite like establishing a relationship with the folks that work there or the owner in some cases. Sure, you might walk in there and walk out with nothing. You might not find what you're looking for, but that comes with the territory. You know it's toys with me. Retro vintage toys, love them. I know in America, my favorite places to go for anything retro uh, are brick and mortar shops, mom and pop shops. Those are the places that I find exceptional deals on fantastic toys. Uh, I'm blessed to have many uh, in my area, but uh, it does definitely pan out to uh, do your research. Look for those uh, vintage antique shops because sometimes you find some toys stuffed in there or a vendor that maybe specializes in toys uh, or games if that's what you're into. Uh, but I love digging around these old shops. I mean, if you're really lucky, you actually hit just a straight up vintage toy shop and that's like heaven on earth, man. Just dig, 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 all kinds of cool stuff all the lines that you know and love, Star Wars, G.I. Joe, Masters of the Universe, you name it, you can usually find it. Uh, great, great tip for somebody starting out. Probably a good 80% of my collection has been bought through local acquaintances uh, over the years. Um, local retro game shops, even not quite so local. It's always worth the visit. Um, for me, nipping down to Roy's locally when he was about, bless him, rest in peace. Um, can't do a deal down Roy's, get all the retro I could find in his Aladdin's cave. Um, love it, the memories. Um, nowadays, I make that journey over to Leon C, South End, go and see Ali at the Retro Hunter, um, or Nerd Base over in Battles Bridgeway. Um, make that connection, 
Um, you know when you go into a shop like Ali's, it's all pucker stuff. You get what it, you know, you get it. It's tested. It's checked over. He always does it for just below the going rate anyway. So you're getting a good deal. If you bundle stuff together, it'll always look after you. And but more importantly, you know you're getting the right stuff. There's so many fake inlays of fake cartridges going around. These um these fakies are you know it's it's becoming a bit of a concern. I've noticed it on eBay that so many sellers selling bloody Master System games with fake inlays or Mega Drive games with fake inlays. It's no good, no good for the collector. Um so yeah, make that connection. Um go to your local shops. As I say, support your local shops. There's so many creeping up and popping up here, there and everywhere around the country. And I'd, I'd love to just go on a road trip, have a week off work and just go on a road trip each day and just go for various places around the countryside um, and just visit the retro game stores. I'd, I'd need a big bank balance for that. Konnichiwa, everybody. And just a quick little video on the subject of where to find retro games from these days. Obviously, they're all over the place. I tend to use eBay, mainly. Um, but for those of you who want to get out and about in the towns, obviously check out your local independent game shops. Always some good, great deals to be had. And if if you find something you like, I tend to try and buy you know, more than one item. And then, more often than not, you'll find these independent games uh, shops will do you a deal. And you'll end up with a much better deal by buying a bundle than you will just buying the odd game. And I've found that to my advantage on quite a few occasions. Um, and so it's a trick you can always use in any uh, any of your local independent shops. I'm not talking about like your game or your CEX, but you know your local uh, specialist shops if if you're lucky enough to have any in your area. And then the other thing that I tend to find very useful at times, I don't really use CEX very often, um, aside from the odd thing. I, I never sell anything to CEX. I only ever buy anything off them that I think is a good price compared with, say, eBay prices or, or local game shop prices. But where I've had good success in the past is cash converters. And you've got to be persistent and I would suggest you try more than one cash converters because I've been to multiple different ones and some sell stuff and it's not particularly cheap, it's very much CEX prices. But then others you go in will be selling stuff way under price and occasionally you can drop lucky, which I've done so on quite a few occasions. So my tip would be to check cash converters in your local area on a regular basis and don't just check the one closest to you, maybe check a you know then the next furthest one away because like i say i have got really good deals in a couple of local ones to me yet there are others which are not good for good deals so a good source can be cash converters hope that's useful everybody and uh sayonara so hello everyone in Retro Edland. So yeah, Ed told me he was doing this series about the do's and don'ts of retro collecting. He asked me to get involved because apparently I am the king of charity shops. I don't know about that. I'm probably one of the luckier people when it comes to charity shops. But he just asked me to talk about why I enjoy visiting charity shops as a source of retro. I guess mainly because I enjoy the thrill of the hunt. I love going to a charity shop never know where I'm going to actually find anything, what I'm going to find. I mostly hunt for games, but obviously the odd time I see a cheeky little toy and a few other retro -y bits and pieces that I enjoy picking up. So you always find a good mix of stuff. So I guess you just, you never know what you're going to find in them. Probably the main reason is because they're cheap. I don't like spending too much money on stuff. But again, that's part of the thrill of the hunt. You never know when you're going to find a game for one euro that you want for your collection. Or you might find a few games that you already have that you can kind of flip trade them in and use that money then to put the retro stuff into the collection that you want so i guess over here we don't really have that much choice anyway we don't have too many retro shops obviously online we could easily go on and buy a few bits pick a few bits up on ebay and stuff like that but yeah i don't know it's just kind of fun getting out there and just finding the stuff in the wild i'm lucky in the sense that i suppose i have a few charity shops fairly close by so i can go and visit them regularly so i suppose if there's any hints and tips in it 
for me I find that just by going to the same places over and over again that's how I kind of have a bit of a successful hit rate on it there's like four of them that are about a five ten minute drive from the house and then another ten minute drive to work so I'm lucky in the sort of hours that I do sometimes I might start work till 12 o'clock so whereas I won't have an evening it gives me an hour or so in the morning to just hit a few charity shops on the way into work so if you do watch my videos and you see the same kind of places popping up all the time that's probably why and yeah on a day off then I just kind of try and find a little area where I might be able to hit seven or eight in one go plan a little route and go and just pop in one after the other generally you kind of find you might even just pick up one or two bits in each shop as you go but it all adds up at the end of the day so yeah that's why I like going to charity shops cheap and cheerful easy way to build up the collection like I said you could go in and find 10 games you might only need seven of them and you can trade or sell off the other three and they pay for what you put into the collection and at the end of the day if you're picking up games and stuff cheap in charity shops when something comes along that you do want to spend a few quid on you don't mind taking the hit out of the pocket because you know you haven't been spending too much money on the other stuff so yeah that's why I enjoy hitting charity shops as a source of retro collecting best luck to everyone out there hunting and cheers Ed for getting me involved best luck with the series and that brings us to the end of the first episode in the mini series hope you've enjoyed it Hope you've learned and taken something from it. I would love and I would welcome you to leave a comment below. Perhaps, you know, talk to your favourite place to buy retro and, and why. I'd like to also thank all of the people that contributed to this video who have shared some of their wisdom. It really, really means a lot. And in the second episode, we're going to be talking about even more places to find retro. So look out for that one and I'll see you very soon. Cheers.